There's been quite a buzz about Jason, one of the main leads in the highly anticipated Grand Theft Auto 6. People are spinning theories left, right, and center, suggesting he might be an undercover cop, an agent, an ex-cop, or even someone with a military background. It's been the talk of the town ever since the first official trailer dropped. Now, I've gotta warn you, what we're about to discuss might just spoil a bit of the GTA 6 storyline for you. But hey, if you've been keeping tabs on the GTA 6 grapevine, chances are you've already heard murmurs about these theories. Now, I gotta stress, folks, that as exciting as these speculations are, they're just that. Speculations. Nothing set in stone. But here's the deal. There are some interesting things in Jason's outfit, from certain glimpses in the trailers, and Rockstar's promotional stuff, that sort of fuel these speculations. They're like breadcrumbs teasing us about Jason's potential undercover identity. So today, I'm here to unravel these clues, and take you through the evidence we've got so far. We'll start with the very first trailer of Grand Theft Auto 6. You know, the one that set the internet on fire? We'll dissect it bit by bit, and get into the nitty gritty of this theory that's got the GTA 6 community all hyped up. And it's not just about the trailers, folks. Oh no, there's a whole treasure trove of articles out there, discussing findings made by fans, diving into details, and connecting dots. We're gonna sift through all that too. And hey, while we're at it, let's not forget about the actors. There's been some chatter about who might be stepping into the shoes of Jason in this game. So we'll toss that into the mix as well. There's plenty to unravel, and we're here to explore every nook and cranny of this speculation, piece by piece. So grab your favorite snack, get comfy, cause we're about to embark on a journey through the GTA 6 speculations, theories, and rumors about Jason. Let's start off by jumping into this interesting Reddit post. I've seen some speculation that Jason is an undercover cop makes sense since we see first-person gameplay of a police raid. I'm guessing he falls in love with Lucia, and his storm between his duty and his love could be not true, but it seems like it would be a good twist in something Rockstar would do. Okay, let's take a deeper dive into this scene where we encounter these four police officers. They're pretty unmistakably cops with that distinct police badge on their body armor. It's crucial to note the small details here, especially regarding their attire, as it might hold some key information. Now, among this squad of officers, there's one guy who stands out from the rest. He's chilling on the far right, sporting a casual white tank top, while the others are all suited up in body armor, their caps turned backward. This difference suggests a hierarchy within the group, making us wonder if this dude's perhaps a higher up or holds a different position within the force. The intriguing part, though, is the context of this scene. It feels like a pivotal moment, almost as if these officers are significant characters in the narrative. But let's pump the brakes a bit. It's all speculation at this point. We can't be certain of their importance or their roles in the storyline just yet. Now, let's loop this back to Jason, the main focus of our attention. There's a striking connection here, the cop on the far right and the one in the middle, both sporting these distinct olive green cargo pants. These pants seem to be a part of their uniform, something that catches the eye. But here's the twist. The same style of cargo pants is seen on Jason in the official Grand Theft Auto 6 artwork released by Rockstar. Coincidence? Maybe, but it feels like too much of a match to ignore. What's up with these pants? Is it a fashion trend among the police force in the GTA 6 universe? Or could it be hinting at a deeper connection between these officers and our protagonist, Jason? The plot thickens, and we're left to ponder the significance of these subtle visual cues. Is there a backstory linking these officers to Jason? Or is it merely a design choice by the creators to establish a visual pattern? We're left with questions, my friends. Questions that make us itch to uncover more about this intriguing storyline. So, buckle up as we continue this investigation, piecing together clues and theories, aiming to decipher the enigmatic links between these officers and our mysterious main character, Jason. There's a whole world of possibilities waiting to be explored within the realm of Grand Theft Auto 6. Let's dive into this article by Exputer that further supports this rumor. GTA 6 fans have been busy digging into the lore of both protagonists since the trailer dropped. It appears that users may already have found notable details about Jason. A slew of forums and posts have popped up with speculations with evidence that complies with prior findings. A post by the Redditor, Jack underscore Torrance 80, on the GTA 6 subreddit, solidifies the past rumors that clarified that Jason would start the game as a cop. The pants worn by the protagonist in the GTA 6 poster are a part of the official uniform of Miami-Dade Police. The green cargo pants are the same color used by the Miami-Dade Police SWAT team. Additionally, the inclusion of body cam footage in the trailer may also imply his past background as a cop. 
It is speculated that he was dismissed from the service during the events of the game, having to continue his life as a petty thief. In the side-by-side -side comparison, you'll notice something intriguing. Those pants on the right in the image are an exact match to the ones worn by those police officers in the trailer clip. The detailing with those black bands and the gun holsters, it's all there. But here's where it gets interesting. Jason, in the official artwork, doesn't seem to have any of those gun holsters. It's as if he decided to part ways with that gear when he left the police force, holding onto only those distinctive pants. Now, about that white tank top he's sporting in the artwork, it bears a striking resemblance to the one worn by the cop, positioned on the far right in that clip. It's these little connections that make you wonder if there's more to it than meets the eye. Could it be a deliberate choice by the creators to hint at Jason's past, subtly linking him to the law enforcement world? Or is it just a coincidence? In the comments of the Reddit post, a user says, he is probably a dismissed cop or soldier, got too desperate and started to do petty crimes. Lucia brings him the local connections and scores, and he uses his former police training skills in weaponry and vehicles, a dismissed corrupt cop or soldier, a freshly out of jail ex-prisoner. Victor Vance and Tommy Versetti. And there could be more parallels between these two pairs of characters if you think about it. Vic was being betrayed again and again in his storyline. When he finally decided to quit, his brother pushed him to enter another deal with Tommy, which eventually killed him. Tommy, on the other hand, is a more cunning and ambitious person. He promised Rosenberg to leave him a piece of his Vice City Empire, but later abandoned him and left him exiled in Las Venturas. These observations really bring up some compelling comparisons, especially when looking at Tommy Vercetti and Victor Vance from previous GTA installments. There's a chance we might see echoes of similar themes or storylines reflected in GTA 6, which lines up nicely with what Rockstar teased in the trailer. Let's zero in on Jason's haircut. It's clean cut and short, a style often associated with law enforcement or military personnel. That detail might not be just a coincidence. It could be a deliberate choice by the creators to hint at Jason's past as an ex-cop or someone with a military background. It adds an extra layer of depth to his character, don't you think? I'm genuinely interested in hearing your take on this theory. If you haven't been keeping up with the latest news on GTA 6 in the past year, you might be surprised to learn just how much information has surfaced. Let's bring you up to date. Here's a rundown of everything we currently know about GTA 6. First, let's talk about the game engine. Developers have made significant tweaks to the Euphoria physics engine, enhancing ragdoll physics and overall game physics compared to GTA 5. Additionally, they're incorporating lighting and skybox systems, akin to those seen in Red Dead Redemption 2, promising improvements like volumetric clouds and better lighting effects. Notably, leaks also hint at advanced weather systems, with heavy fog making an appearance, a feature less prevalent in GTA 5. Moving on to characters, while the main protagonists are Jason and Lucia, Leaks have unveiled additional character names. Alongside Dre, who's distinct from Dr. Dre, there's Sam, a friend of Dre, and others like Kai, Wyman, Billy, Tit, yes, that's the name, Zach R.B. Shaw, Vicky, Iris, Shanice, Booby, and YJ. Surprisingly, we even have details about their heights in the game, with Lucia standing at 5 3 inches and Jason at 6 1. Wait, regarding the setting, we know of three different gangs in Vice City. San For San, a Haitian gang, the Guardia Brothers, and the far-right militia. These details paint an exciting picture of what to expect in GTA 6. We're also privy to a variety of items and tools in GTA 6. Among these are the auto-dialer, binoculars, immobilizer bypass, cutoff tool, painkillers, pool cue, trauma kits, golf driver, food and drink, golf putter, USB drive, golf iron, crowbar, golf wedge, torch, slim gem tracker, jammer, duffel bag for looting, cigarettes, and a loot backpack. Furthermore, there's a confirmed list of weapons including a rocket launcher, assault rifle, baseball bat, polymer pistol, knife, bolt action sniper rifle, Molotov cocktail, spear gun, which is intriguing, smoke grenade, compact SMG, flashbang, micro SMG, sniper rifle, heavy machine gun, auto rifle, and pump action shotgun. The weapon wheel, much like in Red Dead Redemption 2, will be divided into three sections weapons, equipment, and gear. It's interesting to note that players can hold different weapons in each hand, with a quick item inventory displayed in the bottom left corner of the screen. While leaked recreations of the weapon wheels offer a glimpse, it's likely that the final version may evolve as the game progresses in development. In one video snippet, an NPC is seen firing at Jason, prompting a health tip 
to appear on the left side of the screen when Jason's health drops. If you find yourself injured in GTA 6, your health will regenerate slowly over time. To speed up the process, you can access your weapon wheel and use a recovery item. In GTA 5, health only regenerates up to 50%, requiring snacks for full recovery. It seems in GTA 6, you might naturally regenerate to full health, albeit at a sluggish pace. While not confirmed, it's implied that using a medical item will hasten the healing process. As for open world activities, there are seven confirmed ones so far. Dice, golf, fishing, races, adventuring, shipments, and delivery van events. One video reveals a delivery van event near Port Gellhorn's industrial area, where security cameras are active, adding a layer of challenge to potential robberies. Speaking of which, robbery events are highlighted, notably the Hank's Waffles heist, where Jason and Lucia execute a daring robbery. Other clips suggest Jason possesses an ability, allowing him to perceive through walls. Additionally, there are events centered around searching vehicle trunks for either valuable items or nothing at all. Lastly, delivery and pickup warehouse events are mentioned for Port Gellhorn, although specifics remain unclear. In terms of accessible buildings, GTA 6 promises a plethora of options including the Malibu Club, a pawn shop, Jack of Hearts strip club, supermarkets, bars, restaurants, apartments, and laundries, enhancing the immersive experience. Let's delve into the multiplayer aspect. In a leaked clip from GTA 6, we observed a multiplayer session with a player count displayed as PL2 of 32 inches in the bottom left corner. This indicates that there were two players present in the lobby out of a maximum capacity of 32 slots. It's reminiscent of Red Dead Online and GTA Online, where the stated capacity is 32, but practically it's 30 players plus two additional spots reserved for spectators. While it's hoped for larger lobbies in GTA 6, during this testing phase, it seems they were experimenting with 30 player lobbies. Moving on to collectibles, there's mention of Wyman car parts. In one clip featuring Lucia, a developer is seen placing a cardboard box with a circular icon, signaling its lootable nature. The debug text on this box indicates it as collectibles car parts and Wyman car parts boxed generic used, hinting at the possibility of collecting car parts, potentially related to a character named Wyman, who speculations suggest shares an interest in classic cars with Jason. Regarding collectible hats, there's footage of Jason in an apartment where a developer interacts with a hat labeled as an ambient collectible hat, according to debug text, hinting at clothing items being collectible ambient features within the game. Additionally, a compiled list of all brands featured in the game is provided, with acknowledgement that while some may hold relevance to the story, many may not. For convenience, the list is displayed on screen, allowing viewers to pause the video for further inspection if desired. Now let's explore the array of confirmed animals in the game. We'll encounter snakes, seagulls, skunks, raccoons, alligators, waiting birds, squirrels, southern leopard frogs, crayfish, lizards, skunk apes, pigeons, opossums, and whales. While these are the animals confirmed thus far, it's likely we'll encounter even more upon the game's release. These are just the ones we're aware of currently. Additionally, numerous new mechanics have been uncovered. You'll have the ability to walk while in cover, a long-awaited feature allowing players to go prone, marking a first in GTA gameplay. Loot bags will enable the storage of additional loot, and dropping and picking up weapons will be possible. There's a new underfire animation where characters cover their faces during combat, along with the option to self-revive after taking heavy hits. Other notable mechanics include the ability to switch shoulders while aiming down sights, grappling during fistfights, and the introduction of buddy comms and a buddy ping system. This system, likely shared between protagonists Jason and Lucia, remains intriguing, with its full functionality yet to be revealed. Additionally, a new cover mode is introduced, altering the way shooting from car windows is executed. Characters will now fully exit the window, enabling full 360-degree shooting. Moreover, there's a new ability system, possibly exclusive to Jason, allowing for a form of wall perception. Whether Lucia will possess this ability remains uncertain. Players can also interact with more objects and NPCs, engaging in actions like carrying bodies, robbing, threatening, and conversing during robberies. Furthermore, the ability to pick up additional items like beer bottles and cans enriches the gameplay experience. Let's delve into some of the exciting new gameplay systems. Firstly, we have money laundering, which was hinted at during the Hank's Waffles robbery. An icon tracked to the car wash property displayed a washing machine with a dollar sign indicating potential money laundering opportunities. This suggests that properties could be purchased with the aim of laundering money. 
although specifics on how this will work remain undisclosed. Nonetheless, it seems players will once again have the option to purchase certain types of businesses for illicit activities. Fences, not the ones you jump over or drive through, but rather individuals involved in illegal transactions, are confirmed to be in the game. A fence acts as a middleman, buying illegal items from players to resell them to others. Hacking will also play a role, with Lucia seen carrying various hacking tools, although it's uncertain if Jason will have access to these items as well. Previous leaks hinted at Lucia's role as the designated hacker, but only time will tell. Pragmatic, cool, and chaotic romantic are different event types mentioned in the events list. Players will also have the ability to command the other character during a robbery. In leaked footage, a tip prompts players to check in with Jason, or hold for more options, indicating the potential to issue commands to your partner during a heist. This feature should streamline gameplay, allowing players to effectively control both characters simultaneously. Let's dive into the AI witness system and police recognition feature, which is quite significant. In the Hank's Waffle robbery video, Beneath the Wanted Level Stars, there's a mention of full description, suggesting that witnesses have detailed information about you. This implies that once identified, the police will recognize you. When Lucia enters a police vehicle, there's initially no vehicle description, but this quickly changes to a full vehicle description. This indicates that law enforcement will have detailed information about your vehicle. Moreover, the text warns that any vehicle seen entering will be noted by the authorities. This suggests that even after losing a wanted level, if spotted again in the same vehicle, the police will pursue and apprehend you. During the robbery scene, Jason is shown attempting to prevent customers with yellow icons above their heads from calling the cops or fleeing. Additionally, a female NPC inside the diner exhibits similar behavior, with her icon flickering as Lucia leaves, turning red when surrounded by cops, and then fleeing upon spotting Lucia. These advanced NPC systems indicate a more sophisticated interaction model. Regarding item sharing, Jason and Lucia appear to be able to share items between them. For instance, in one clip, Jason steals items from containers, keeping some for himself while sharing others. Unlocking doors and gates is also demonstrated, as seen in a video featuring Jason in the San Fersan area. Debug text indicates locked door panels, implying the need to unlock specific doors and gates. Moving on, let's delve into the plethora of new features, spanning two full pages. Firstly, there's an enhanced AI system, exemplified in a video where enemy AI targets Lucia when she turns around. These AI adversaries showcase improved decision-making, adjusting their shooting strategy based on the circumstances. Notably, they dynamically alter their position concerning nearby objects, hopefully avoiding frustrating, head-glitching tactics. Additionally, they exhibit more tactical behavior, like lowering their profile during reloads and strafing left to right while firing. NPC behavior has also received an upgrade, with groups of AI no longer wandering solo, but instead moving in clusters, reminiscent of Red Dead Redemption 2's feature. This is evident in a video, where Lucia encounters a group of tourists, chatting as they pass by. This adds depth to the pedestrian dynamics, as previously seen in GTA 5, where individuals roamed independently. Now, expect to see various groups, and even couples strolling together, enhancing the game's immersion. A new feature allows players to surrender to the police during a robbery, introducing an intriguing dynamic with yet-to-be-revealed consequences. Additionally, players can purchase gumballs from vending machines, possibly serving as a health boost, although details remain speculative. Similar to GTA V, your character's attire will become soiled over time, adding a layer of realism. Furthermore, glimpses of Jason in various states, with different hair lengths and facial hairstyles, hint at a hair growth system akin to Red Dead Redemption 2's feature. This seems highly probable given the game's lineage. In terms of sustenance, players can consume items directly from their inventory. In a gas station scene, Jason adds wine, soda, and fruit to his inventory, indicating the ability to eat and drink on the go, similar to mechanics seen in Red Dead and GTA Online. Introducing a new event type known as a cop trap, which will be strategically set up in various locations. The confirmed locations are displayed on your screen. This indicates that law enforcement will deploy different tactics to ensnare you. Alongside this, there's a new police system known as Time Until Cops Dispatch. Now, when you commit a crime, the police won't immediately appear. Instead, you'll have a brief window to evade capture before law enforcement starts converging on your location. Security cameras play a role in surveillance, but their functionality differs from GTA Online. Instead of instant detection, there's a detection meter akin to games like Payday 2 or 3. 
As the meter fills up, you'll need to break line of sight within a certain time frame to avoid detection. Players will also have the ability to restrain NPCs, primarily through zip ties, as seen in leaked footage. This feature adds a new layer to robberies, allowing for more control over the situation. Furthermore, players can loot vehicles, as shown briefly in the Hanks Waffles video. A button prompt to examine SUV appears, suggesting the opportunity to inspect random vehicles and potentially pilfer valuables from them. In GTA 6, expect an enhanced car hijacking system. For instance, the presence of the immobilizer bypass suggests that stealing luxury cars will be more challenging. Additionally, an item called a Slim Jim will be utilized to unlock older vehicles, indicating increased difficulty in car theft. Moreover, there are events that allude to the possibility of failing to steal a car, with distinct scenarios like steal car in progress and steal car fail, showcasing potential mishaps. Two intriguing events, Carjacking Dash Cat and Carjacking Dash Advanced AI, hint at further complexities in vehicle-related activities. The game boasts improved vehicle damage and handling, evident in clips where car crashes exhibit more realistic effects, such as front fenders splitting apart and car hoods bending realistically. Furthermore, car interiors now feature a functional GPS and waypoint system, enhancing the immersion, especially in first-person driving. Additionally, players have the option to enter a car from the passenger seat, adding a touch of realism to the gameplay experience. Considering these details, it's evident that GTA 6 prioritizes intricate design elements, as evidenced by the meticulous attention to detail throughout the game. In GTA 6, expect to encounter raccoons scouring through trash cans and pilfering food bags. This is evident in the game files, where three world events, Raccoon Climb Out of Garbage, Raccoon Rummage Trash, and Raccoon Steal Food Bee are documented. While there are numerous intricate details to delve into, if you find this level of detail intriguing, you can find more information in the provided link below, specifically on pages 19 and 20. As for sound design, it's no surprise that sound will be more realistic in GTA 6. Weapon sounds are crisper and more authentic, with increased volume for a more immersive experience. Additionally, the impact of bodies hitting the floor will have a deeper thud, creating a more visceral effect. Police sirens will reverberate off buildings and environmental elements more realistically, while the sound of items will vary depending on the surroundings. For instance, if you're in a shipping container, sounds will echo more, adding depth to the auditory experience. Overall, these sound enhancements aim to emulate real-life scenarios more accurately, contributing to the game's realism. A while back, there was a significant leak revealing a plethora of potential world encounters, random events that occur as you navigate the game world. I've displayed these on your screen, and while I won't go through each one, you'll notice they're quite fascinating. From parking disputes to donut burnouts, protests, and even someone getting a concussion, these events add depth and realism to the world of Vice City. It's truly exciting to imagine strolling through such a dynamic environment where something is always happening. Take a moment to review them if you like. They're quite impressive. Moving on, we have an extensive list of every confirmed vehicle slated to appear in GTA 6, sourced from both the game files and leaks. I covered these in detail in a previous video, so I won't repeat them here. However, I've provided them on your screen for your reference. If you're interested in exploring the full list yourself, you can find them on page 30 of the document. We've got a plethora of confirmed locations scattered throughout Vice City and its surrounding areas. Naturally, Vice City serves as the main hub, but within its bounds, we'll find neighborhoods like Edgewater, North by City, Rock Ridge, Little Haiti, Vice Beach, South Beach, Washington Beach, and Key Biscayne. Additionally, there's Port Gelhorn, which seems to be a distinct city akin to Sandy Shores or Palito Bay from previous games. Other notable spots include Yorktown, Ambrosia, Sundown, The Keys, La Pearl, Red Hill, Lake Leonida, Hamlet, Stockyard, Homestead, Grass Rivers, Ikenfaka, underwater locations, and more. The attention to detail extends to each of these locales, with various mini locations nested within them. It's astounding how much information we already have about the game's geography. Moving on, the community has endeavored to piece together a map of GTA 6 based on the coordinates and locations gleaned from leaks. This rough map outlines Vice City at the bottom right, with Port Gorn positioned on the left. The top section of the map remains a bit mysterious for now. Nonetheless, this preliminary map looks incredibly promising, and anticipation for exploring its intricacies is palpable. Finally, the document wraps up with around 20 pages detailing places found in the leaks that align with real-world locales in Miami. 
This inclusion further underscores the meticulous efforts poured into crafting a rich and immersive game world.